Another episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour, Mike. What's going on? My mic's backwards, bro. <laughs> All over the place. A little bit. Uh, yeah, a lot's going on. We have to go over weekly recap. We got two seltzers that we're going to crush. We're dual fisting on this week's episode, everybody. So oh, if yeah. you're not watching on YouTube, feel free. And if you do head over there, make sure you subscribe. How about the boys? We're growing. Uh, that would be really intense. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, we got to do a thumbnail after this. Remind me. Thumbnails. The uh, first and foremost, the jersey is back, bro. Yeah, why? Because I'm vibing. Oh. Thad Castle can never die. Uh, the next point. Did you watch his new show? No. No? Reacher? Yeah. No. Why? Uh, Terminalist came out. It was out before Terminalist. It, correct. I was watching Terminalist. I mean, it came Between, out before Terminalist. Yeah, but you don't understand. I was... Here's here's how it went down. Here's, here's how it went down. I was finishing the last book, the most recent book. I was finishing that. Then Jack Carr was posting all the trailers and everything else for it, and nothing else in the world mattered. I stopped Outlander, and I'm just like, this is it. So then Terminalist yeah, dropped. I'm still on episode one. Why? I haven't had time to breathe, dude. I mean, that's I, fair. I've been so busy. Yeah, I'm that's so fair. behind on editing. Which one do I want? Regular cranberry? There we go. That sounds good. Finish strong. Uh, our, oh, yeah. our sponsors, quick. Queen City Creative Works. Queen City Creative Works is a married couple in Cheek de Vegas, and they make customized materials. So if you're interested in... That was a big build-up for, like, customized materials. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you want uh, bottle openers, water bottles, coasters, things like that, and or shirts, feel free to head over to queencitycreativeworks.com. Scroll down to their Shop Now button, select it, and then you are now able to buy Buffalo Happy Hour branded merchandise, and it can be shipped to your door no matter where you are in the world through USPS and they do great things. So head on over to Queen City Creative Works. Thanks for being a sponsor. Next sponsor is High Peaks. If you are a local business and want to support another local small business that's also veteran owned, head on over to highpeaksimagery.com. They can take a first person drone, fly it through your establishment, and take your marketing to another level. If that interests you, reach out to High Peaks and they can make it happen. High Peaks, thanks for being a sponsor. Addies, thanks for being a. Uh, logo sponsor in the corner. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. Weekly recap. What'd you do? Edited. Golfed. Disc golfed. Spent time with Gina. And now we're here. Basically every single other week. We went down to Elegantville because I'm like, you know what? I've been golfing a lot. Should probably have a, have a, have a date day, you know? Go down to Elkinville, hang out a little bit, poured the entire time. Oh, but no. That, I mean, it really didn't. It, ra- it rained a little bit. We were scared that it was going to because it was like massive thunderstorm warning all throughout New York. But we went down there, hung out for a little bit, did some shop and went around to some stores, grabbed some food at the Grange, you know, the Grange in Hamburg? Yeah. They have another spot in Elkinville, and it was so good. Did you see my cocktail that I posted? It was fantastic. They don't miss, dude. I know. It was so good. Yeah. Like, it's that coffee, bourbon... What was that other ingredient? Nailed it. Yeah, I crushed it. It was so good, though. I I love whoever runs that, like, enterprise there. Yeah. Like, I love them. I want to have them on. What's up, Grange? I know you're listening. They're crushing. They are. They're really good. And so we did that. We walked around a little bit, then had a beer at EBC before it started really downpouring because EBC's patio was sick there. Have you been there? No. Oh, oh dude, well, it's sick. Not recently. Yeah. I've been there, just not recently. Yeah, it's really cool. It's kind of like a weird village though like you think that there's a lot to do but there's not no there's not like there's one street and then you're like okay sweet where do we go from here yeah we'll get gas yeah then just fill. yeah then get murdered in that tops <laughs> and go home it's just like such a weird area and it's so far out oh my god steelbound is up the street which is cool steelbound has amazing food and good beers but like this isn't all just a promotional video of ellicottville but it's cool it's a cool spot it's just super far and i forgot how far away it is from springville 
Correct. I was golfing two, three weeks ago in Ellicottville, and I had to get gas. And I'm like, I don't want to stop in Ellicottville. There's a, there's, there was a, um, like a festival going on. So I'm like, I'm not stopping at that one gas station in all of Ellicottville. I'm going to get slammed there. I'm never going to get out. So I started driving, and I'm like, I remember there was this gas station on the 219 before you actually get on the thruway. Mm-hmm. I'll just hit that on the way home. Started driving. Gas station hasn't been open since, like, the Nixon administration. It's just super run down. There's nobody there, and no signs are on their, their storefront either. So I'm like, all right, sweet. Guess this place isn't open. And then I Googled um, Springville because I had, like, 40 miles left, which would have been fine to get wherever I wanted, but your heart starts panicking, you know? As soon as you start seeing double digits... You're like, I'm going to run out, and I'm going to be stranded somewhere, and then I'm going to have to call for help, and that's the most beta thing to do ever. Correct. So I was like, all right, let me just go to um, Springville. So I drove up to Springville, past this beautiful golf course. I'm like, oh, I want to play there at Springville Country Club. That's where I'm getting a membership next year, 100%. I can guarantee you. I'm going to start just playing there all the time. 30 minutes away. Simple. Yeah. You can go out whenever I want. Yeah, it's a nice escape. Yeah. So, yeah, Springville's not bad. First Walmart Super Center in the area. Did you know that? I did. We yeah. used to go. It was a trip. Go down there, and my mom would buy us chicken fingers. It still is a trip because when you go in there, the you're sense. seeing the uh, you're seeing some interesting clientele at Springfield oh, yeah. Walmart. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't have arms there, but that's all Walmart's though. When you go to Walmart in general, that's a trip. Have you ever been more scared going into an establishment outside of Walmart? Yes. Like what? Dollar General. Now there's one on every corner. They don't scare me anymore. Walmart still scare me. Not just how pretentious or anything, but I've been to some pretty sketchy places outside of the country. Well, uh, obviously, I'm talking well, in your local vicinity, like in Buffalo. There's not. There's nothing is more terrifying than a Walmart. That's what I'm saying. It you used walk to in be there and Kmart, everyone's in like. Then they all closed. What's that? Uh, like kitty pajamas. What's the Hello Kitty pajamas? Everyone's in there. And like, what are you doing? Why do you go to the store in pajamas? I, like. Graphic pajamas. Yeah, like have some pride. Graphic clothing makes me so uncomfortable. I don't know why. It just makes me very... Like, if you have a Simpsons shirt, it's just like, what are you doing? Do you not have pride? Nothing against the Simpsons, but you're going outside. You're talking to Wear today. something. I'm trying to make these episodes a little what more else, interesting. What else grinds your gears? Everything. Pet Peeves episode number 47. <laughs> no, it's just like, why are you wearing Hello Kitty pajamas out in public? Yeah. I have a pair of Dunder Mifflin pajamas. I wouldn't wear those out in public. Well, you're an adult. Yeah. Yeah. I found out what really pisses me off, and it's when a bunch of white people go to a concert and essentially stand and then wave to another section <laughs> to ensure that their friend knows that they're there. Like, sit down. No one just... And it's only white people. What is that accomplishing? It's the worst. You know what else is the worst? When a bunch of white people just stand up and start screaming down from three to start the wave. We don't need it. No one wants it. We're just sitting here waiting for the show to start. We don't need these little games. No, just sit down. We don't need the wave. I, I will say, though, at a sporting event, a well-orchestrated wave is kind of orgasmic. Like we got it going. Like, if everybody is in it. We got it going. That's what I'm saying. It if took a couple trips. everybody is in it, and it is methodically going around, it's kind of sweet. But when you got Daryl starting it up, he's like, hey, yeah. Like, it's just, guys, sit down. It'll start organically. Because then you get that weird, like, 17 runs around. When it's just two people each section doing it, and it's like, bro, what are you doing? The other <laughs> this problem, isn't what you're looking for. The other problem is that it's so. All right, I'm going to start from the top. All right. Daryl stands up, counts down from three. <laughs> okay, you get like seven sections, and then it stops because no one's paying attention. Right. So it's like, okay, we'll try again. By the fifth time, people realize like, oh, they're too stubborn to stop because again, white people. Yeah. So. Eventually, you get to like the tenth to twelfth section consecutively, and then it just stops because that one section's not paying attention. Then it becomes a positive thing where it switches to like public shaming, <laughs> and the fourteen other sections that were involved start booing the fifteenth section. That's hilarious. Yeah. Then you start again, and then it's like, dude, we're gonna do it. Like it's gonna get there. The problem starts again when you make your first rotation all one lap, all the way around. 
great. Everyone's involved. Morale's increased. We're excited. We're all in this together. The problem is white people don't know when to stop That's true. because then everyone feels bad. So then you get four to five times all the way around, and it's like, when like is it awkward to just like how do we stop this? Yes. Like we got to stop the wave. Like it's it's over with. We did it. We accomplished a thing. We can all get a little gold star. This is annoying. And then you still have Stephanie standing up in the other section waving. I'm over here. Right. I'm here. Do you see me? <laughs> Hi. And then they then they call each other. Marissa, I'm down here. Look, I'm waving. Look. And there's I'm 75 here. people waving too. There's a there's Derek. There's 35,000 people inside the same stadium. Right. Like, you, it's just stop the nonsense. And then they're all waving at each other. I'm like, this is the worst. Like, my, no one gives a shit that you're also here. And what are you going to do? They're they're on the other side of the stadium. You can't talk. Right. What, you, what are you, are you going to carry a conversation once you acknowledge <laughs> yeah. each other? And it's like doing Morse code. <laughs> yeah, what's, what is the end game? Like, three claps for hi, two right. claps for goodbye? This is stupid. Sit down. Just text each other. Hey, man. Are you actually at the concert? Yeah. I'm in 102. Sick. I'm in 129. Enjoy via text. And you're just sitting there like a normal human being. Right. There's no wave. There's there's no the wave going around the stadium anymore. You're just waiting for the main act. White people literally ruin everything. The they best. ruin waiting for a concert. The best part is when like there's only two sections doing it. And then you see the guy that starts it like looking around the... Like trying to follow the imaginary wave of everybody was doing, and then it comes back to him, and he's like, "Get ready," and then he goes again. Like he's waiting for it to go, even though no one's participating. I and hope. He's just like, <sighs> "Yeah." I hope come all on. those people fall into a well. Yeah. I really want to <laughs> tell them. I I hope you have the day you deserve. <laughs> you know, like it's just the most mundane response in the history of the universe. Anyways, um, how was the concert though? I mean, dude, he murdered. He murdered. I don't know. Like, I probably know some of his songs if I heard them. But, oh, like, do. I don't care at all. Yeah. I hate country he, music. I, I understand. Um, I've been listening to him for 30 years. So, he started in 88. I was born in 92. It's just been on. Like, it's one of those things. So, he was a bucket list artist that I wanted to see before I died. I have no idea how many more tours he's going to do. How old is he? He's 60. And he's in phenomenal shape. Vocally, physically, he ran around the stage the entire show. Mm. He was so hyped up, he just screamed. That's cool. Um, nailed it out of the park. And what's really nice is he doesn't forget fans. He does like he's super down to earth. So a couple things that I wanted to point out: one, if you go to a Garth Brooks concert, Garth Brooks came to Buffalo. Okay, I went to the concert. I grew up listening to country. I grew up with VFWs, etc. It's just a thing. So, and yes. Through the 90s and early 2000s, if you go to a VFW, country music was on. That's just how it worked. So you just watched your aunt and parents chain smoke cigarettes at the bar because you could smoke back in the day inside of the establishment, get drunk on buckets of light beer, and do pull tabs. That's how it went. Oh, yeah. And then you would get, like, your little root Yo, Shout beer. out pull tabs. Those things were sick. That's what I'm saying. So then you would get, your, like, your little plastic cup of Sprite or root beer, and, you you know, you were drinking beer, so you're hanging out with the adults, and then you were just ripping pull tabs, and you got, like, a bag of chips. Hell yeah, like three lemons, and you're like, let's go. Yeah, and then you got, like, a free bucket, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was disgusting. <laughs> just so, more alcohol. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, he comes to town, and when you go to a Garth Brooks concert, when, if you bring a sign... And it's a good sign, whether it's a, a recommendation of a song or something he doesn't normally do. So two examples. He's on the stage and he's looking around, right? He sees a woman in the nosebleeds with a neon green sign and he, he's able to read the sign. And really? he said, and he's three songs in, okay? He had an opener for four songs. This is like a Nashville recording artist. He's actually really good. He left. He's just like, damn, like, all right, I didn't expect that. Like, I'm going to go tell Garth, like, he's going to have a good time. Like, you guys are a really good crowd. Garth came on. And I, I was like, well, we kind of are. Like, whatever, we're a little supportive. But you felt it was just a little different. Like, the whole night, it just felt different leading up to Garth. Garth comes on, first song, murders. He's screaming. He's literally sprinting the whole stage, running around with his guitar. He's in jeans and a black button-down and a white cowboy hat and black cowboy boots. Literally sprinting all the way around and he's singing and then he stops and he's doing a couple things 
as soon as he started singing, the whole stadium sang. Again, white people sing, yeah. right? So, Which that's another weird phenomenon. Yeah. And then when they try to harmonize, it's the worst. Yeah. So I'm surprised there was, like, not as much clapping because white people love to clap. So anyways. Which is another thing I can't do. People are really bad at clapping on beat. Yes. Have you ever had that where everyone's like, and then you get like the. Yeah, because everyone's like offbeat. Yeah. It's so frustrating. Yeah, it's like learn to be, learn to clap. Yeah, it was terrible. It's not that hard. So he's doing his thing. As soon as he starts singing, the whole stadium sings. He he didn't need to sing the entire song. The whole stadium was doing it for him, and he he was eating it up. He loved it. He's just like like all right, like if you guys want to party, like let's party, like let's all right, like I'll I'll match that energy. What did this chick sign say? Are you getting to it? Yeah. Okay. So he's three songs in. Sees the sign and stops. And he's like, you want me. He's like, hold on, hold on. You want me to stop the entire production of this whole show and sing this song? Because that's what he does. He'll sing what your sign says as a recommendation, Mm -hmm. whether it's his song or somebody else's. The sign said Alabama Clay, which is an old country song. It's about farming. It's a beautiful song. And he goes, you realize, and he's talking to this woman. And who's in the nosebleeds. And he's like, you realize that about 80% of the audience have no idea what that is, right? Like, they weren't even alive for it. And she's on the Jumbotron now, and she's, like, nodding. And he's like, you know what? I'll do it. He's like, I'll just do it. And he stands there, and he does a cover of Alabama Clay. It was better than the original because his voice is just ridiculously iconic. Yeah. And he, he murdered. So... He did this cover, and the woman's just, like, crying. And the whole stadium was just, like, got, like, off the cusp. Like, that's – he's an artist. He's a performer. Like, that's raw talent, and we're all just here to witness it. Like, yeah. it was just ridiculous. Murdered that, and then continued on, did his thing. The dance – you know the song The Dance if you heard it. It's almost like a unanimous wedding song that uh, people choose for their first dance as husband and wife. That's one. So that and then Thunder Rolls. You know that song, The Thunder Rolls? Like, All That Remains did a cover of Thunder Rolls. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's off my head. Yeah, if you heard it, you'll just be like, oh, that's Garth Brooks? Like, yeah. So did that, murdered. And then what was interesting was he had um, he has another super famous song that he doesn't normally sing the third verse of. And a sign said, third verse, please. Beep, got to take a sip. And he goes, every time we're on tour, for some reason, we go to Buffalo last. He's like, we, there were three tours. We came here three times. He goes, but I always get asked the same questions because he's talking to the crowd throughout the show, right? And he's like, the the reporters always ask kind of the same questions. Like, why, why go to Buffalo or whatever? And he kind of fine-tuned his answer to just kind of support Buffalo. And, of course, the crowd's just like absolutely going insane because mm-hmm. he talked about Buffalo. But then he said, the, you always hear critics state that Buffalo doesn't know the country. He goes, this sign is proof that Buffalo knows their country. The third verse sign or the yeah, Alabama Yeah, the third Clay? verse okay. sign. And, well, I mean, Alabama Clay was just like how, like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, that proves it. But, like, okay. So he's like, you know what? We're doing the third verse. So he sings the third verse when he normally doesn't during a concert. Because mm-hmm. you know how some artists, like, shorten their songs? Yeah. So it's like, I, I did it type thing. He's like, I'm doing it. Play the third verse. And he's like, you guys finish it. And I got goosebumps talking about it, dude. The whole stadium was just like, okay. Their whole band went silent. And he's just standing there. And he goes like that. And he just lifts his arms. The whole stadium is singing his song back to him with a flashlight on the back of their phones and it's sold out. So the whole stadium is doing it. And it was just like, dude, that's, re- it was just unbelievably amazing to witness yeah. and be a part of. And I'm like, okay, like I, when you hear something from your childhood live for the first time with 85,000 people, it's tough not to just like choke up. So I'm sitting there and then, you know, it's me and Colleen, and th- this is one of the first concerts we've ever been to alone, just us. Mm. We've always went with, like, family or whatever, yeah. so that was, like, a really cool moment. And she's like, I didn't – but she was forced to listen to Garth Brooks on road trips up to up to Maine sure. by her dad. So it was just really cool to, like, do that together. And then at the end, he leaves, right, show's over with. He's introducing his whole uh, 
like everybody involved like this guy sets up the stage this guy mm-hmm. you know this chick runs the entire production the guy that runs it is wearing an SU jersey he's from Syracuse and he's setting up his stage oh, really? he's cool. been with Garth since like the 80s That's sweet. the production manager for the whole tour has been with him since the 80s she's from Binghamton so she comes out in an Allen jersey so the whole place is just going bonkers <laughs> they do the shout song his backup vocalist that also does the keyboard he was in Animal House playing the keyboard oh, cool. in Animal House. So he does a shout song. The whole place goes ballistic. And then he leaves. The show's over after uh, after the dance. And then the entire 100 level of the stadium is bleachers. For those that don't know, they're, they're literal metal bleachers. It's old school. In unison, it sounded like thunder or a plane was flying over the stadium, which was, like, really odd because it's like, isn't this, like, a no-fly zone type thing? Like, Okay, and what you what it was was everybody started banging the bleachers in front, and it it was the encore call to bring him back. Mm. So in unison, the whole stadium's calling for him to come back. He played for two and a half straight hours, leaves, and then comes out and then plays for another forty five minutes. Damn. Then brings his new wife, Trisha Yearwood, who's like a legend in country, yeah. out, and she performs three songs. So then he does oh, like cool. then he does like other requests. He's saying happy birthday to a fan. He w- like to two fans. There was another woman that was battling cancer. He did her song request. He held up another person's sign that was um, combining the bills and his song's famous lyric. Like just insanity. It it ended at eleven o'clock. Damn. It dude. It was a banger. And then he even t- he said out loud like in the very beginning, he goes, um, he's like, all right, Buffalo. He's like, I know you guys are going to come out regardless of weather. He's like, so let's just party. He's like, I don't give a damn about the curfew. Let's get fined. And the whole place just went ballistic. Oh, and sure. then he just skipped the 10 o'clock curfew. And he's like, I don't care about it. I'll pay the fine. <laughs> I'm literally Garth Brooks. Yeah. So then he's king of country. Like, literally. That's his what slogan. What is car is going to do? Yeah, right. Like, dude. <laughs> I, and the mullies that were in this place were mint. Oh, I bet. So... There was a text thing for a voting. You could vote or whatever to have something happen. Uh, it was like a backyard concert. It was a QR code and then a phone number. So people were texting it to win this backyard concert for free that they were just doing all across the country. That's their next thing. They're doing background concerts for free for people cool. as a raffle winner. He took phone numbers from that and FaceTimed them. Oh, so really? people are in their car driving home, sitting in traffic for like three hours trying to leave Orchard Park, and then their phone rings from a no no number and they answer it and it's a FaceTime and it's Garth Brooks and he's just calling fans, just saying like thanks for coming. That's sick. I mean like dude That's really cool. Dude, the dude's the dude's murdering. He just literally takes over Buffalo and then he's calling his fans for a FaceTime. It's just unbelievable. Super it was the best concert I've ever been to. It makes you think why more people don't do that. Like, yeah. random artists that aren't well-known. Like, Garth doesn't have to do that. <clears throat> so why aren't people that probably should do that? Why don't they? They could build their fan base so much quicker than if, the, if the, they should just do that. Yeah. I understand it's probably easier said than done. And it, Garth Brooks doesn't have to worry about setup, breakdown, like, all that stuff. He doesn't have to worry about that, so he has the time to do this. But if you're even, like a, like, a mid-level, like, the last concert that you went to, what was that before Garth Brooks? It was a metal show, I believe, if yeah. I remember correctly. Like, that band, they probably don't... They're probably at that point where they're not breaking down their own stuff. It was. It was as LA Nine. <clears throat> yeah, they're probably... They're not at that point where they're breaking down their own stuff. Can you imagine if you were driving home, probably get in an accident because you're the one actually driving, but you get a FaceTime from it? Like, that would put you over the moon. Yeah. Probably more. Like, there's a level of fame that you reach where it's just so surreal that... It almost comes off as insensitive, not insensitive, but like you don't appreciate it as much. Like if you got a phone call, a FaceTime from Garth Brooks, and he's like, thanks for coming out, man. Really appreciate it. Take care. Enjoy your night. Or if you got a phone call from like As I Lay Dying, I feel like you would probably appreciate As I Lay Dying more than Garth Brooks because it almost kind of comes off as impossible to get it from Garth that you wouldn't even register it. I I don't know. Like – me specifically in that specific situation, if Garth FaceTime me, I would appreciate it more than as I dying. But there was a moment where there was a fan that had a sign that said thank you. And he stopped and he's just like, why would you thank me? He's like, the only reason I'm on the stage is because of all mm-hmm. of you. Like, all I can say to that is thank you. 
I'm like, you've been doing this since 88. And to be that down to earth still, yeah. like he's just, he's one of a kind, man. I mean, it's yeah, just that, ridiculous. That's refreshing to see. Yeah. There's people that are like that. Dude's murdering. And he's selling out stadiums. Yeah. You know how hard it is to sell out a stadium? Right. That's ridiculous. You know, uh, comedians are starting to do s- small stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. Theo Vaughn calls people that call into his podcast and he just calls them and checks up on them. If they leave like a really intense voicemail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'll just call him. He's like, hey, man, just checking in. I got my voicemail. You're on the show. Like, how are you? And he'll talk to him for like 15 minutes. That's it's cool. Yeah, it's crazy. I wonder if, it, like, do you think that's new? You know, I think Where celebrities our, are paying more attention? Or do you think yeah. that they're just kind of sick of it? No, I think it depends on the generation of celebrity. I think social media helped a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think having that platform available to then just have that direct contact real quick where it's just a text yeah. essentially that's i mean dude you can't beat that i feel like celebrities nowadays though are more sick of the fame i feel like you hear more of people like that are actors and actresses and musicians being like dude like don't look up to i'm just i'm just a face did i tell you about ryan reynolds and work no so he's got a house in connecticut and they did his house they oh, fixed really? his house and he came downstairs, and he's like, hey, man, just just call me Ryan. Like, it, we're, it's a construction job. Like, just right. what what's going on? Like, what do you have to talk to me about? And it was literally just telling him about how they had to make one modification due to the condition of his house. And he's just like, you're like, I know you know who I am. Like, yes, I'm him, whatever. Like, just call me Ryan. Let's just rock. Super down to earth. And I... Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people are just really sick of the paparazzi, the TMZs, like the nonsense of it. And it's like, just, I'm a normal person. Like, I just happen to, you know, be in front of a camera constantly. There's still a lot of people. Well, there's still quite a handful of loud people that are, don't talk to me. Yeah, they're like, I'm the Greta Thornburgs. Yeah, loser. (laughs) Just kidding. No, she's like the complete opposite. (laughs) It's funny listening to her story because whenever you hear her talk about, like, all that stuff and everyone's like she's taking a plane to the conference like no she literally sailed a boat to the conference like she's actually living it and you got to respect her for that but you got a lot of people that are because she got roasted for it yeah but but yeah go on there are a lot of people that do like the fame like friggin pulling cars when i met him it's like bro don't assume like i'm mark it's like bro Put your shoulders down, tee from the right tee box, and let's play golf. <laughs> I, I was so upset because, like, that type of stuff just doesn't resonate. No. I mean, we're basically at that point. Too. No, I'm just kidding. But, like, <laughs> even if, like, for some godforsaken reason this podcast does blow up, I never want to be like that. And I want people to, like, call us out because We of have it. imposter it's syndrome. Never it's going, never yeah. going to happen. You and I, like, nah, man. I know. <laughs> it's just, it's wild to think that people really live in that life where it's like bow down to me i'm ryan right like if he was like that he like, wouldn't have fans you go through my assistant to talk to me about my basement issues he's like bro your basement's literally gonna collapse if i talk to an assistant for five minutes we're done yeah it, that, that's cool to hear about him it's refreshing yeah i just yeah i think it's a generational thing i think it's telling of the times where yeah. people are just sick of it but did you see, just because you were talking about Jumbotron and this came into my head, there was a video going around. I think it was from a basketball game or something. And there was this attractive girl eating chicken nuggets and di- dipping it into her Pepsi. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. Dude, that is so gross. <laughs> She's <laughs> what living are her best you life. doing? She's living she her best gets life. so red and embarrassed. And it's like, what? Do they not have ketchup or something? Like, you just resort to that high fructose corn syrup that tastes good on those breaded chicken fingers, bro? So gross. It's so weird. When's the last time you had chicken fingers? Uh, Three weeks ago. Just From because. Where? Um, when I went to Bri Brothers, they had a food truck, Munch food truck. Yeah. And we had chicken fingers from there because I wasn't feeling a. I wasn't feeling a burger i wasn't feeling a hot dog i just got a chicken finger basket before then would have been like a couple years yeah it's been it's been a couple years for me the well no that's not true because kelly got these like weird super healthy chicken fingers and made them once in the fairly recently but other than that that doesn't count though. I, that's what i'm saying like, like i want the grease yeah like commercial chicken fingers. i want the ecc chicken fingers <laughs> 
That's what I want. I want the holstered meats, chicken yeah. fingers. The one that are just sitting in a plastic bag inside of a freezer at a meat market. And yeah. they're just like, pick them up. It's $5 for 14 <laughs> pounds. It's like, yeah. Because 96% of it's fake. Right. <laughs> like, that's what I'm yeah, talking about. I want chicken. all the hormones. Did you Do you watch Hulu at all? Do you have Hulu or no? Hulu. Yeah, we do. Do you see those stupid commercials? Oh, no, not Hulu. What is it? Peacock. You don't have Peacock. No. There's this stupid this commercial that's line. going on right now. It's this... It's a different, like, couple every time. There's two people in there all the time. And they're trying to advertise for, like, almond milk or plant-based ice cream. And all that they say to the people is, like, how do you think that ice cream is? Isn't it weird that it doesn't contain any crab? And everyone's like, crab? What are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't contain any crab in it. And people are like, okay. And then it comes up on the screen, like, non-dairy yogurt. And it's like, what What are you doing? I guess it's getting me talking about it, which is probably the whole purpose of it. But then there's another commercial of them talking to a different couple and saying, like, can you believe that there's no real mayonnaise in that? And everyone's like, what? Mayonnaise? And like, yeah, there's no real mayonnaise in it. And every single time that commercial comes on, Gina and I look at each other like, obviously. But again, it's getting me talking about it, which is probably their whole point. But it's just like, it's, really I, annoying. it's so annoying. Yeah. Every time I mute, I don't, I don't want to hear from you. I don't blame you. I'm... Almost at the point where I'm becoming my father and muting announcers for sports games, like <laughs> Joe Buck, and then you just turn the local radio on and watch the game yeah. and listen to the radio because you just can't stand listening to the announcers anymore. I can't stand Joe Buck. Yeah, Joe Buck's annoying. I like Troy Aikman, but Joe Buck's annoying. Yeah. They're switching it up, so we'll see what happens But aren't this year. they doing Amazon? No. Who's doing Amazon this year? A bunch of people. Really? Yeah. Because Fitz is, I think, right? A bunch of people are doing Amazon. Like, big names are doing Amazon. They're leaving the major networks, so they're following that money, you know? Mm. Jeff which, Bezos know what's going on. Yeah, basically. Speaking of which, the uh, how's that golf league working out still? Good? Doing mm. good? It's doing so good. The XFL just announced a bunch of, uh, like, eight locations that they're going to be playing in. It's pretty big. Where? Uh, the cities? Did see. you even say the useless fact for today? No, dude. Useless fact. We're, like, 35 minutes in. Right. All right, hold on. I got it right here. Uh, also, today in 2018, Josh Allen officially I, signed as a Buffalo Bill. I saw that, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Appreciate Tyler. You. Uh, Literally live recording. You don't get that any. If you want a service like that, become a sponsor of the show. We'll announce your name live. <laughs> Serial killer Ed Kemper. I love him. Have you ever seen Mindhunter? No. Dude. I know you didn't like my Outlander recommendation. I know you did it, and I'm sorry that I let you down. Right now, I want you to stop what you're doing because you don't have the terminal list and watch Mindhunter. It is one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. It's all about serial killers. How many episodes? The whole first, the whole first season, or whole second season. One of the seasons is about Ab Kemper. All right, the so dude is a G. The guy that plays him, really quick before you say that, the guy that plays him in this movie is a kindergarten teacher. So he's playing a serial killer. He's like 6'8". He's a big dude. And he's playing a serial killer in a TV show. And he's a kindergarten teacher. It's the coolest dynamic ever. You have to watch it. All right. Sorry. Serial killer Ed Kemper befriended the very police officers investigating his murders and would socialize with them at a bar called The Jury Room. They called him Big Ed and never suspected him. When he initially confessed, they thought he was pulling a prank. Yeah. I think that in the show they say that. It's crazy. It's wild. Having that much ego to be like, they're never going to catch me. I'll just be their friend. What were his victims? I like all dude, women been, of a certain age? It's been so long. I don't remember. I haven't watched that in a while. I should watch it. They were thinking about renewing it for another season. It's that kid that um, starred in Glee. Um, he does musicals all the time. I forgot his name. but he's, Dude, most of the characters in Glee passed away. What? Seriously? You don't know about that? No. Do some research on that. You'll be literally fascinated with how many people died from Glee. Why? All different reasons. ODs, one woman drowned trying to save her kid. Oh, yeah. It's like a huge thing. That's weird. It is. Uh, Jonathan Groff. Doesn't ring a bell at all. He uh, He's the main detective in it. So the whole point, the whole purpose of the show is... It's way back in, like, the 70s, I think, that this show takes place, and it's two detectives. 
that are doing um, ancillary research on trying to figure out what causes serial killers to kill. And it's this whole like mind, it's my, it's literally called mind hunter, but going through trying to figure out why serial killers do what they do. And one of their victims or one of the serial killers that they talk to is Ed Kemper. They talk to Charles Manson, like these actors that are playing it. And it is just a fascinating show. Do they use the actual confession tapes as the responses to the questions? And then they just, I think it's real footage. Yeah, I think. And then do you know Holt McCallany? He no. was in this awesome boxing movie a while ago. What was the boxing movie or boxing show? It got canceled. Lights out. That's what it was. It got canceled, uh, but it was so good. You you should watch that. What about Lie to Me? Have you watched that? Mm-mm. You never seen Lie to Me? No. What are you watching right now? Still still going through Peaky Blinders and um, trying to find some time to watch Terminal List. I've just been so busy. I haven't been able to watch anything. So Lie to Me is literally about body language. Oh yeah. An ama- it's it's an amazing show. So you know my good friend, uh we'll just bleep his name. I'm in his I'm in his wedding oh, coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the main character is unbelievably it's it's uncanny with mannerisms, the way he walks and the way he talks to his dad. Oh really? And his, his dad recently passed away, and that show is just kind of like... And he and I, growing up, were always obsessed with body language, reading people, seeing if someone... Like, cutting through some serious BS with people, because we've been friends since third grade. Yeah. So, as you obviously go through the, the school years, you pretty much... You know, you learn people, you see who's lying to you, you see who's real, who's fake, right. etc. That show is so dead on, and it's it was actually... Uh, used by a bunch of different law enforcement agencies as like training mm. but it's all based on their their expertise and they use them to develop the show when did it come out years ago it's not so su- it's it's more recent than boston legal mm. but it's an incredible it's it's just amazing so he'll look and he's like your left eye keeps twitching and he's just like watch i'm gonna ask a question and if he raises his lip I, I'm going to establish a baseline, and then I'm going to see how he reacts. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, this person's sweating, this person's doing this, and it teaches you every single thing about body language, and you pick up on it quick. It's, Dude, it's amazing. It's crazy what the body does when you lie. Dude, it's 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 <clears throat> so obvious. It's so obvious. Even I've called out uh, my coworker. You met him. Um, little Blondie. That's yeah. what I call him. He's... Guys, he's like, yeah, he's like, 100 and, he's like 125 pounds <laughs> wet. So, and I'm not kidding. So, weird that he assume he's wet, but whatever. Every time something serious at work happens and we've got to think and troubleshoot and come up with a solution, again, we focus on the solution, not the problem, because, you know, we're yeah. running this thing. Right. So, he'll, he'll do this. And sometimes he doesn't move his fingers. He'll just sit and he'll he'll close his hands, but his head always cocks at a forty-five and looks down. And I called him out on it. I'm just like, I know you're thinking. He's like, What? Are you, I'm fine. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, You're not. You just took a lap and your head's literally cocked down at forty-five, and you're pacing and you're thinking about something. You're lost because you're trying to multitask. I'm like, What's up? How can I assist? He's like, I don't do that. I'm like, Yeah, you do. So then I started calling him out on a certain couple things, and he's like. Is it that obvious? Like, oh yeah, like absolutely. So now we go Probably back not and forth. to everybody. But no, it's just not. Somebody, but when you yeah. spend seventy hours a right. week with somebody, it's it's ridiculous. But yeah, so now we go to the gym together, and he's a little blondie, so he's real little, <laughs> right? So if somebody walked up to you and was like, "Wow, like you've lost a ton of weight." You're going to the gym consist. Like, I want to work out with you. I want to know what you do because I'm tr- I'm trying to be like you, right? So. The first thing you do is you're like, oh, you want to work out with me? Okay. I'm doing legs tomorrow. Come with. And you just murder them. <laughs> because that's the initiation. If you can yeah. survive legs, you can do anything else. Right. But legs is like you go to work, right? So first day we work out, we do, uh, we do back and buys. I'm like, all right. So I preemptively texted him. And I was like, hey, man, it's Saturday morning. It's leg day. I need you to understand a few things. And I just sent him a novel. I was like, it's my therapy. It's my escape. I got headphones in with music that's really loud. I'm not going to talk to you. I don't want you to talk to me. (laughs) Just follow. 
and it's the same routine. It's elliptical, it's stretch, and then it's weights. And keep up or fall out, go home, I don't care, whatever. Drink water throughout. All I'm going to do is tell you how many reps we're doing with how many sets. That's it. And I'm not going to talk. It's going to be hand signals. And he's like, okay, sounds good. I'll be there. So Saturday morning, we wake up, go to the gym. I get there. And I press the elliptical. And then he just, like, looks at me. And I was like, and that was it. It was a head nod. And I had my number set for the elliptical. He just, like, kind of peaked and then, like, kind of came close. And he tried to match my resistance, and I knocked it down, too. I'm like, you're literally going to die. I, could do, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's you know, he's small, right? He's a little guy, yeah. Yeah, a little blondie. So <laughs> do the mile on the elliptical. We stretch. And then ended up running into a, um, a dude that is uh, – he's a vet, and he knows uh, – the other you mm-hmm. very very well so he you know health and welfare check making sure he's good whatever so i was like yeah run through that and then i was like all right let's do it and we get to we do like two exercises and then we're on the third and the third is leg press because i'm like all right we'll warm up we'll get the blood flowing with the elliptical then we'll hit um leg curls we'll see if we can do leg extensions but then it's right to leg press to do like the real work right like that's the first real working set that's the main exercise so we hammer it, and he texted me. He's like, are we trying to waddle out of here? And I, all I said was, yes. So then I'm, for some reason, my knee felt really good, and I'm just like, we're going heavier. Like, it's time. It's been consistent long enough where my legs are like, all right, start feeding me a little bit. So I'm like, let's go, right? And I, at this point, I'm sweating. Like, I'm gross. So he's trying to keep up. Obviously, I'm removing weights for him, whatever, but he's doing his, he's keeping up. He's doing the same reps, same uh, sets, just different mm-hmm. weight. Well, I text him because he's like, he's shook. Like, he's visibly not okay. And I text him and I was like, flip a switch, become an animal, become obsessed with the muscle mind connection, move the blood, and move the effing weight. Why don't you just talk to him? And talk no, him that? because he's doing a set. So as that's happening, I text him quick drop the phone and then do a wall sit waiting for him to finish and then he's just looking at me like are you gonna stop i'm like no so then i do my i do my set and then he jumps in and then i start doing push-ups because we got to do 100 push-ups a day and i was like even if i'm doing legs i'm still gonna do 100 push-ups right. so do the push do you know it's like sets of 25 bang it out done so he's looking at me and he's just like Okay, and he reads his phone, and then he's just like, okay. And then he flips a switch, and then he starts, like, all the bad things in his life. He's just like, I'm putting it into into this machine. I'm just like, that's literally the point. That's what this is about. All the stress from the week, any your girl pissed you off, somebody burned your salad, like, doesn't matter, <laughs> like, move the weight, right? Like, just become obsessed with that. Become obsessed with building your body and becoming symmetrical. Have fun with it. Because just doing the reps is super boring, but when you think about how it affects you, mm-hmm. you're going to be obsessed. Yeah. And he's got an addictive personality, so I'm, like, I'm training him to, like, think like it. So all of a sudden, we do that, do two more things, and then we're on the next third thing. And I was, and I was, you know, teaching him on how to do it, and it was isolated. Uh, it was single leg isolated hip thrusts. So he's smoked, and I was, and we finish it, and he literally collapses. And I was like, we're halfway through, and he's like, that's fine. And then now he's just like, he'll just die in the gym. He doesn't care. <laughs> and I said, we're halfway through, like we're done with hip thrusts, which were single leg to isolate it. And he's like, that's fine, because I lost feeling in my legs, basically hip down <laughs> about 30 minutes ago. So whatever else we do now doesn't matter. So so then we keep cranking. And then I was like, all right, now it's time for calves. And then it clicked. He's just like, that's true. Like, we've only done quads and glutes and hamstrings. Like, right. we haven't even touched calves yet. So then we blasted calves. And after, like, two and a half hours, I'm just like, nice job. Like, we're done. And he's like, okay, what's tomorrow? So I tell him, and he's like, I'll be here. So I was like, okay. But he won't admit just, like, good work. Like, he doesn't he doesn't know. Like, good workout, thanks for that, like, yeah. whatever. So I'm texting him, like, how do you feel? Like, is it worth your time? Like, are you good? And then he's like, that was, he's like, yeah, I can't, I can't walk. <laughs> like, my ass is numb. I was like, good. I was like, day three is going to be awful. Day two is going to be the worst. 
And he's like, okay, sounds good. So he wakes up the next day. He's still like, okay, feels a little tight, whatever. Day two hits, and he's just like, I'm not well. <laughs> it's like, no. Day two meaning the day after or two days after? The second, yeah, the, the literal second day after you work out. So if you do leg Saturday, Monday is going to be the worst because it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. delayed so, lactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. I thought you were saying Sunday is the worst. I'm like, no, bro. Mon- no. Monday is the Monday worst. Monday is going to be horrible. Kills you. Yeah. It's always two days so after. So I, I was talking to him today. I'm just like, you good? And he's just like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but You just try to avoid stairs as much as possible. That's what I normally do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't really need to go upstairs today. <laughs> Honey, I'm going to sleep in the spare room. <laughs> yeah. I'm working from home tomorrow upstairs. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Mm-hmm. But we're going... We're going three days a week. Good. What days? Uh, Saturday, Sunday, and what? Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Oh, you're going before work? No. After? After. Oh, Jesus. I know. I know. I can't do it. Well, the issue is we can't go before. It's when the fucking... It's when the nerds come out. A bunch going after A bunch work. of the juice dudes are there, but it's it's all we got. I just can't do it if you're staring at yourself, bro. We had one another nude guy come in, and he's just like walking around like this. I'm like, bro, put your arms down. You're not swole. Just be at the gym and do your workout and go home. I asked a guy once. This was hilarious. I asked him. I'm burpy, dude. This is, this do- is kind well, of coming up. Well, yeah, it's carbonated. It's a seltzer. He's, he's doing arms, naturally, right, in a singlet tank. And he looked like we made eye contact. No idea who this kid was. And he was still in college. It was obvious. It was like the college branded tea, like yeah. whatever sport. I'm like, okay, no one cares. And it's not even D1. So, like, chill out. And he uh, he puts down the weights and he's just like, and he gives me a, you know, the head up thing. And I was like, when do the muscles come with the shirt? And he's like, what? What? I'm like, you're such a tool, dude. I'm like, just let me know when the muscles show up, because obviously your shirt already came in. Yeah. And then he just put his head down and had no response. I'm like, you're, you are you, don't wear that. Ronnie Coleman wears that, not you. Right. Like, what? No one wants just to see your nipples. T-shirt. Yeah, right. You know, be a man. Like, just move. Do you need to wear, like, spaghetti strap? No. No. You're just a tool. Yeah. It doesn't help you get a better contraction. There's no performance benefit of wearing it. You're just nope. a tool. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. I don't make fun of anybody at the gym except for those people. The only time if you're new at the gym, January second, go for it. I appreciate you. Yeah, I, mean, I won't ever make fun of you. You'll be gone by the twentieth, but keep doing you. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll encourage you. You come in on the twenty first. Happy for you, man. You wear that shirt. I don't talk to you at all. <laughs> I don't even look your way. That in the because then you start like puffing your chest when you walk by like an attractive girl. It's like, bro, she's not going to get with you. She doesn't want to see you. She doesn't want to talk to you. That and the super thirsty girls drive me insane. It's nuts. Yeah. Luckily, I don't have too much of that because I go so early. Yeah, that's fair. The only other thing that really drives me nuts is uh, outside of, like, juice heads, which I, like, live your life, I guess. I don't, Just get blood work regularly so you know if you're okay. It, the super thirsty girls, the singlets, and then the, uh, God, I can't remember. I can't do with loud people either. But there's breathing and then there's shouting. You don't need to shout. There's this guy at the gym. He looks he's he looks like a enlarged version of my stepdad, and my stepdad used to look very intimidating. Bike biker, white hair, white goatee, just ripped out of his face. This dude, my stepdad is like five eight maybe five nine like he's a little shorter i don't know exactly how short he is but this dude is like six six like he's a big boy but he looks just like my stepdad and he is probably like 70 maybe and every time that he's at the gym and he's doing a workout he goes (sighs) as he's pushing up and i cannot help but giggle (laughs) and he's gonna kill me one of these days i can almost guarantee it because he looks like a guy that literally just got out of prison for committing murder. Like, he almost just tried to stab Lee Zeldin and Kathy let him out. Like, that type of person. And he's... And I start crying laughing every time. Like, I can't do this. Tom looks at me. I look at Tom. We can't finish our set. We're just laughing too much. So, do you wear shirts? I wear this to the gym. For specific workouts? No. Like, if I'm doing, if I'm doing chest... Or shoulders. I hate sleeves because it rubs. It rubs. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I just wear, like, normal tanks. Like, it's 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 just literally no sleeves. But it's not a singlet. It's just yeah. a normal tank. 
and I'll wear that for those two days. Chest and shoulders, because I hate the rub. It mm. drives me insane, and it's super uncomfortable. Yeah, I wear I wear T-shirts every day. Okay, we, we get T-shirts from companies all the time, so I'll just throw that on. Like Balaton, amazing workout shirt. This great workout shirt. Yeah, that, that's all I wear is just T-shirts. I'll probably wear the Balaton shirt tomorrow at the gym. Dude, it's so nice. Is it? Is it soft? So comfortable. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay. Gina loves it. She sleeps in it all the time. Okay. We just got it. Okay. She's sleeping in it all the time. All right, man. Let's round out today's episode. Thank you all for tuning in to episode 149. We got 150 next week, but what are we doing? Are we getting that 150 proof? No, just kidding. Can't afford it. Too poor. Um, <laughs> thank you all for joining 149. Appreciate it. Let us know what your favorite conversation was today. Was it the Garth Brooks? Was it the Jim Bros? Was it the uh, Ed Kempfer? And let us know in the comments below. Did you watch Mindhunter or no? Hope you did because it is an amazing show. And they were fighting with Netflix to get renewed for a third, third or fourth season, whatever is next. Um, but I don't think it ever happened. So we will see. But thank you all for joining today's episode. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you do drink anything, we highly recommend picking up some of these neutrals from Addie's Wine and Spirits. But if you're going to drink anything that we have on the show or anything else, please remember to drink responsibly. Be good preserved. Yeah. My old. Do not litter. We're out. I'm not